Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. First and foremost, before we get this epistle started, I'd like to give all praises, honor, and glory to our beloved Heavenly Father, His Only Begotten Son, our beloved Lord and Savior, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Harachach Wadash. Double honors as always to our apostles and our elders of Great Millstone, who rule well, who teach well, who we learn the truth from daily, and the sincere citations as always to the sincere argument of Great Millstone on down that teach the likewise doctrine, as well as the sincere listeners of the hopeful elected nation of Israel, which consists of the speckled bird Hebrews are like foreigners scattered among the heathen that look like the heathen. And this is an epistle that I had entitled to the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashmi Al Shai. Hebrew Israelites love John 316. All right. And this right here gets into um, addressing a misconception, a common misconception that a lot of these bugged out Christians, you know, like to spread because they don't understand that when it gets into understanding the holy scriptures you have to understand the hebrew and you have to understand the greek you got to get into the hebrew and you got to get into the greek and that's something that the elder apostles and the elder bishops of great millstone and the elders on down and akim on down constantly exhort us all to do if we are serious about serving the heavenly father yahweh in the name of his only begotten son yahweh shai all right so without any further ado let me go ahead and get um the book of saint john chapter three and starting from the top. And this also gets into something that the beloved Elder Apostle Kabar that um I heard him once say. If you want to get I think it was Elder Apostle Tahar, Elder Apostle Kabar, uh one of the other apostles had said if you want to get the context for a, a particular chapter in the Bible, then uh easy um a easy a easy learning tactic is to basically start from the very first verse. All right. You know, like when um brothers get James the book of James, the first chapter, and you start at the first verse and you can just start to dismantle the Christian doctrine of the Gentiles that Paul was sent to being heathen. No, they were Israelites in a heathen state of mind. But reading on St. John chapter three, verse one, and the subheading says the new birth. OK. And this particular chapter is 36 verse it has 36 verses in it. So reading on verse one. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Yahweh Shai by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher from the most high power, Yahweh. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except the most high power, Yahweh, be with him. Okay, verse three, Yahweh Shai answered and said unto him, and this is rare letters so was Lord Yahweh Shai speaking. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of the most high power, Yahweh. Nicodemus saith unto him, how can, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Now, right here, this goes into how um, many of our elders and apostles and uh, elder bishops on down has broken this down, saying that um, in this instance, Nicodemus, he, he didn't quite understand what our Lord Yahweh Shai was talking about. He was being carnal. And when you're carnally minded, you can't fully um, receive these scriptures. OK, but Yahweh Shai ends up breaking it down for him. And it, once again, these scriptures were written a full time for our learning. So reading on in verse five, Yahweh Shai answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except the man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of the most high power, Yahweh. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the spirit. Right, so right here, our Lord Yahweh Shai was letting Nicodemus know that, oh, that's what I wanted to say. Stalakia. Verse six right here. It can be taken out of context from the Christian perspective. This is why Christianity is a poison. All right. It, it distorts. Christianity is, is a hell of a drug. A brother did a video titled that. And it's true because what do drugs do? They distort your perception of reality and they alter your state of conscience. So, well, the Stalakia, they have you enter into altered states of consciousness. Suffice it to say, you won't be sober if you get if you believe in Christianity. You won't be sober in the spirit where it matters. So you won't receive these things. 
But the point is, they'll read that which is born of flesh is flesh, and they'll say, see, that means the Israelites, the original Israelites, you know, they're they're just Israelites in the flesh. But spiritual Israel is those that are born in the spirit. Any anybody who so believes in, in JC, they can be saved into the king. You know, and these Christians, they, they even sound corny, man, especially these dudes. These Christian dudes really sound effeminate. But they'll just run their mouth, mouthing off for hours about something they have no idea, and they think that they're cutting the true men of the Lord when they really not. But reading on, I'm going to pick up at verse 9. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Verse 10, Yahweh Shah answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel and knoweth not these things? Right, so our Lord is saying, Look, you, are you supposed to be a teacher of the law of, of, the, of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bashem El Shah, to the Israelites, but you don't know these things? This is, this is important, right? Once again, showing that, look, this is for Israel. It's not for the heathen to realize. Verse 11. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, we speak that we do know and testify that we have seen and ye receive not our witness. Verse 12. If I have told you earthly things and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you heavenly things? Right. So when we tell, for example, if we the true biblical Hebrew Israelites, the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, and speckled bird Israelite foreigners that look like heathen, tell two-thirds of our people who are also Israelites that we're the chosen people because the Heavenly Father is dealing with our seed line, which is determined by your father, and they don't receive it. That's something that's earthly in a sense. So how are they going to believe it if we tell them heavenly things, such as being born again? Our Lord Yahweh Shah was speaking spiritually. Okay? And Thawadi Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah, because that brings me back here in verse 8 when our Lord says, The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Right? Because you won't. How can I put it? Because essentially, when it comes to the Spirit, it's just like the wind. And um, beautifully. And a beautiful um, connection to that is the Hebrew word for spirit, as well as the Hebrew word for wind, is racha, which is why we say racha kodash, which is the spirit holy, or you, as you say in English, the Holy Spirit. So basically, you can't see the wind. You can't physically perceive the wind with your physical eyes, but you know it's there. So likewise, when when um, an Israelite, when a Hebrew Israelite is born again, when they're born of the spirit, okay, you didn't necessarily see a new spirit. You didn't physically see a spirit manifest around them and all these other things. No, they changed because Yahweh Shai started to sup with them. He knocked on the door. They opened up and then the understanding, the true understanding of these scriptures was opened up to them and they started to walk in the ways of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai to the best of their ability. Then from there, you can start to see a physical change like, OK, this brother stopped eating pork or this sister right here. She stopped going out to the club with her, with her friends and stuff like that or um. This brother right here used to be a, a master thief, but he, he 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 repented of that, and now he's he's preaching the word of Yahweh Bashmi Al Shai in truth and sincerity, and he no longer steals. You know these things right here. That's being born again, okay. And let me see, could I go back to what our Lord said right here? It wasn't that; it was particular. Right here, right here in verse five, John chapter three, verse five. Our Lord Yahweh Shai. Said right here, Yahweh Shah answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except the man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of the most high power, Yahweh. Right. And the water, the water that you need to be born of, that actually brings about that true powerful change, the change that was mightier than John the Baptist's baptism, is the water of the word. Because when you truly believe in the words of Yahweh Bash Miao Shah, and you're convicted in your spirit to, and you have that righteous fear of your Bash Mel Shah. Because, yes, contrary to these, these crazy Christians, these bugged out, as the beloved Apostle Kabar calls them, the wacky tacky Christians, contrary to what they're talking about, yes, fear is healthy. There is a, a, a balance to fear, just like everything in creation. All right? It's righteous to fear your Bash Mel Shah, but it's wicked to fear anything else on the level that you should fear your Bash Mel Shah. Because it leads into folly. It leads into you not believing in the Lord. It leads into you doing things that, that shows um, apostasy, faithlessness, 
And Israel has done enough faithless acts in the eyes of Yahweh Bashmel Shah as is, which is why we were put into captivity in the first place, which is why he had to send Yahweh Shai for the remission of all of our sins, which is why we are in this last captivity having to rehearse the righteous acts. We aren't even worthy enough to fully um, be in our own land and keeping these acts. Now we have we have double trouble. We got the flesh that was already always a problem. We have the two third niggas amongst us. We got men crept in unawares. All right. And then we also have to deal with the fact that we're in Babylon, the great ran by Esau, Edom, the self-proclaimed so-called white man who's not white, but he's the red Hebrew Edomite. And that also called the devil and Satan that the Bible speaks of the spiritual. So like the physical incarnation of the spiritual demon Satan. OK, now that being the case, because he runs this place and because he hates Israelites more than any of the other heathen nations. And he's designed to be the one that wants to destroy the Israelites. And he's going to and he's been doing so this entire time. But he's not going to be able to fully destroy us because Yahweh Bashmi Al Shai has already given the victory to the elect. Because of this, we can't keep the laws perfectly. We have to rehearse them. This is why we need Yahweh Shai. You can only keep your laws perfectly if you're sovereign. We're we are not sovereign. But you can be saved by walking in the spirit. That is how Yahweh Shai can justify us before the Heavenly Father Yahweh. And because Yahweh Shai is the Heavenly Father Yahweh's beloved son in whom he is well pleased. And because our Lord, he 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 went on the cross. He was obedient unto death. He was found worthy to loose the seven seals written up in the book of Revelation, the, uh, the fifth chapter. And now we have a mediator and high priest in the heavens that can testify on our behalf before the father and we can have our sins covered. OK, but back on the main topic, uh, reading on John chapter three, and I'm going to pick back up at verse 12. And it reads, if we if I, it's like you, if I have told you earthly things. And you believe not, how shall you believe if I tell you of heavenly things? Another heavenly thing is the fact of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, dealing in. It's two things I want to say right now. One being reincarnation. Most people can't understand that. And two, the uh, a main of uh, even bigger um, stumbling block for our people is there's no such thing as free will. Because if there was free will, that would mean the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, he's not sovereign. He's not almighty he's not all powerful he's not uh, that would mean that the heavenly father the howl bashmi shah is not omnipotent which means all powerful if you can basically decide what you want to do that means the lord can tell you to do something and you can just reject what he he wants you to do and he, there's nothing he can do to make you change your mind that would mean when the prophet jonah was told by the heavenly father how to go to nineveh and prophesy and he said no then the Heavenly Father couldn't do anything to make him go back. That would mean the Heavenly Father couldn't command that fish to swallow Jonah. That would mean that the Heavenly Father couldn't put the spirit on Jonah to repent because he was in that fish. These are the things, these this, these are the truths that Yahweh Bashmi al Shah is merciful and gracious enough to open up to us. Those of the hopeful elect. And this is the truth that we have to guard. All right. This is what it means to be set up for the defense of the gospel. You can't just let our people spew bullshit out of their mouth because you caught up on a unity spirit. And there is no unity between Israelites that are not walking in the doctrine of Yahweh Bashmi al Shah. If we're not walking in the same doctrine, there can be no unity because the Lord is not dealing with two thirds of our own people. He's tired of these niggas always having a fucking opinion. That's how we ended up in captivity. You think the Lord gives a damn about you, your Israelite cookouts? No, it's a smoke up his nose. John chapter three, verse 13, and it reads, and no man hath descended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the son of man, which is in heaven. Verse 14, and as Masha lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the son of man be lifted up that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. And that point right there, these particular verses all right, I first uh, I first got the understanding of this breakdown watching the video by uh, Elder Yashawamba on his channel, Renan Save 144. So this precept, these verses right here is how you properly apply line upon line, precept upon precept to not be tripped up by the Christian misinterpretation of John 316. OK, this is not the Hebrew Israelites making up some doctrine to come off deep or try to make ourselves feel better because we're in captivity under the so-called white man. No. This is the truth of the Bible. 
The men of the Lord understand we have to endure. We have to suffer. We not, you know, we not, we're, we not worldly jakes, man. The Lord, he, he, Yahweh Bashmi al was gracious enough to actually remove the most of the weakness from us. And we have to keep working to get the rest of it off of us day by day by, you know, praying to Yahweh Bashmi al fast and so forth and so on. We're not doing this to, because we hurt by the captivity. No, we understand we got to bear the indignation of the Lord because we sinned against them. But while doing that, the work of the Lord don't stop. We still got a service to do. We got to properly break down these scriptures. And through that, we get our comfort because the Lord, he's rewarding us. We don't need to tell you this to sound deep. We love all of the scriptures, man. They cut us for our benefit. And then when they're not cutting us, we get healed. We get stronger. And even by getting cut, it's a lock, y'all reword that. Even when we getting cut, the scriptures is making us stronger because that's a weakness being cut out of us. Okay. But right here, this precept to get back on topic. Verses 13 to 15, you got to understand these. Primarily, I would say verses 14 to 15 before you get to uh, verse 16. As Moses, Masha, lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. Right, because in the wilderness, the Israelites, the true biblical Hebrew Israelites, all right, before we were, before we had the bywords of uh, so-called Negro, Latino, and Native American slapped on us. Okay, before the mass scattering of Israelites, which uh, caused the speckled bird to come about in large numbers. <clears throat> Salakia. All of us were in the wilderness under Masha and Aaron's leadership. And there were Israelites that got bitten by serpents. So the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, he commanded that Masha create a brass serpent. So if any Israelite got bitten, they looked upon the brass serpent and believed they would not perish from the snake venom. So likewise, that's what our Lord Yahweh is saying here. Lord Yahweh, he is that true brass serpent. Yahweh fulfills a lot of um, different signs and miracles and wonders and prophecies that was stated in the, in the Old Testament. Salakia, he fulfills everything. All of the scriptures point to him pursuant to the book of John chapter 5 verse 39. Okay. Now here's the point, John 3:16. Our our favorite verse. For the most high power Yahweh so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Right, because in the wilderness when our forefathers were bitten by serpents, okay? They looked they looked upon the brass serpent back then and they were healed so they wouldn't perish from that snake bite. But they still ended up perishing of old age. Yahweh Shah is the true brass serpent where not only will you not have to worry about perishing from a snake bite or this or that, you won't have to worry about perishing at all from anything ever again because that's what the new covenant, the second covenant consists of, the Israelites obtaining immortality and, and being having, having full dominion over the creation as it was intended from the beginning. He that hath an ear, let him hear. Verse 17, for the most high power Yahweh sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten son of the most high power Yahweh. Right. So let me go ahead and break down John three sixteen. Let me get the root word real quick through the spirit. If this uh, blue letter loads up. Um, okay, here we go. The word for world being used in John 316 is Strong's G 2889 Cosmos. 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 Outline the biblical usage and let's just get let's get right to the point and get the definition that applies line upon line, precept upon precept. Outline the biblical usage. An apt and harmonious arrangement or constitution, order, government. Okay. Ornament, decoration. Adornment, i.e. arrangement of the stars, the heavenly host as the ornament 
of the heavens in first peter chapter 3 verse 3 okay let me see that real quick all right all right so the definition that we're using right here based upon the precept line upon line precept upon precept is an apt and our harmonious arrangement or constitution order of government right how does this apply because the Israelites, when our Lord Yahweh Shai came on the scene 2,000 years ago, we were four captivities in. As far as the major captivities go, that was prophesied by the beloved prophet Daniel. The four beasts, all right? The lion with the wings of an eagle being the neo the Slaki, the neo Assyrio Babylonian captivity, all right? Northern Kingdom went into the Assyrian captivity, the neo Assyrian captivity, and Southern Kingdom went into the neo Babylonian captivity. The bear with the three ribs being the Medo-Persian captivity. All right, the bear lifted up on one side, you know, representing the Persians being over the Medes in that empire. And then you had the leopard, all right, with the four heads and the wings of a fowl being the Greek empire, Alexander the Great, Alexander the Greek and his four generals. And then you had the Roman empire, which was the beast that was diverse from all the others. OK, and that's the that was the beast that the Israelites were in. And once again, like I said, in, um, at an earlier point in this epistle, when the Israelites are in captivity under the heathen. They're not sovereign. And that in from the beginning, it was not so the Heavenly Father did not create the Israelites to be in captivity under the heathen. He created the heathen to be in captivity under the Israelites. So every way you every which way you look at this world in the um both in the cosmos sense, the aeon sense, and the oikumeni sense, it's out of order. Okay? This is not an apt and harmonious arrangement, constitution, order of government. Because now you see the world's being polluted. You see uh, all types of freakism being promoted. You see women out of order. You see men not being masculine. You see men and women going on stupid dating shows, debating on who brings what to the table. All this crap, like it's everything is out of order. And the Lord, Yahweh Bashmi al Shai, he sent his only begotten son. He loved, he so loved the world, as it says in John 3 16. He sent his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Because how? There's much snake venom, there's much serpent venom spewed all throughout Babylon the Great which spreads out throughout the entire world. The ideologies, the philosophies, this Babylonian wine. All right, this serpent's piss, so to speak. You know, the main serpent's piss being that 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 Maxine Waters that Esau forced everybody to take. But you know, this, this other bile that this serpent is putting out is his false doctrine. Our people are perishing by believing in Christianity, Islam, uh, Judaism, for those small number of jakes that's into that. Uh, uh, the, the African ancestors and all this other bullcrap, Buddhism, Santa Maria, all, Santa Maria, Brujeria, Vodun, all this stuff. All of these things are, are snares unto our people. So by Yahweh Shai coming into the world, doing walking the walk that Yahweh commanded him to walk, going on the cross for our sins, being in the grave for three days and being raised up afterwards and ascending into heaven. All right. The, heaven, the heavenly father, he is able to show us the grace that he had foretold in the Old Testament. We have a way back to the heavenly father where there was no way because first covenant standards, if you got cut off from the commonwealth of Israel, you was done. You were no longer in Israelite. You couldn't partake in our ordinances. You were just done. But through Yahweh Shah, we all have a way back. And once he returns, the cosmos, all right, that the world of Israel will be in perfect order. OK. And you may say, OK, well, why is he saying Jake will be condemned? Why is he saying he said the son not the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saying if you don't believe, then you're condemned because two thirds will not be saved on this side. But the Lord's blood. It covered the entire nation of Israel. It's just on this side, the one third, the elect, is covered for righteousness. They're going to be covered unto salvation. The two thirds 
are going to be covered unto damnation on this side because two thirds of our people said to kill the Lord and let his blood be upon them and their children. So you see Jake's getting judged out here. No matter how young or how old, it might have been a little baby or an infant or an old woman, we don't matter. You don't know what that Jake did. It's more than likely one of the Jakes that said to kill our Lord and let his blood be upon them. And the Lord, and they were not off of repentance because they're the two thirds. But in the kingdom, all of Israel will be saved. Why? Because the one third Israelites that get translated into the chariots of the Lord, which Esau called the so-called UFOs. All right. Once they get translated, they'll be entered to the second covenant and receive these new bodies that come with immortality, spiritual power, and being able to keep the law, statutes, and commandments perfectly. So the wages of sin being death, if the Israelite can't sin, then they can't die. Yahweh Shah, so like Yahweh Shah, Shah has no cause to put you for death if you're doing right. And that's beautiful because that uh, reminds me of Genesis, the fourth chapter. Let me get that real quick. Genesis chapter four. Okay. Verse seven, and it reads, if thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door and unto thee shall be his desire and thou shalt rule over him. All right. So essentially, Yahweh Bashmi al he's always fair, man. If you do wickedness, you're going to have to, you're going to have to eat the, you're going to have to reap the fruit thereof. If you do righteousness, you reap the fruit thereof. And the Lord wanted us to see that perfect balance first and like firsthand experience. It's like you're not like firsthand experience of righteousness and wickedness. So we can appreciate righteousness and choose righteousness and finally put the wickedness aside to the best of our ability in this flesh. Okay. But that's what the Lord means in verse 18 when he says, He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. Because two thirds of our people make up a lot of excuses as to why they don't believe in Yahweh Shai. And not believing in Yahweh Shai goes deeper than just talking about, um, I, I'm not going to worship another person over the Heavenly Father. No, it goes into being offended in the doctrine. Because the Lord comes in the volume of the book is written of him. Which is why our Lord had to say, blessed are they which are not offended in me. It's, the Lord is more, it's more to tell Yahweh Shai than just being a man who walked on the earth 2,000 years ago. He's, he's way more than that. He's our King of Kings, Lord of Lords. He's the only begotten Son of the Heavenly Father. He's the Word of the Most High Power, Yahweh made flesh. So these scriptures that we read, it's Yahweh Shai. If you're offended in any point of the doctrine, you're offended in Yahweh Shai, and you need to rebuke that demon, and you need to pray for understanding, and pray that your faith be increased. Because, yes, that can get you condemned. Why? Because you'll start, what's one thing that you'll do if you don't believe in the doctrine? You'll start to teach another doctrine. And this doctrine is holy. It's set apart. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. Yahweh Shai said that himself. And even the Apostle Paul. So that being the case, the Christian doctrine, it's a poison to our people. It's a snake venom. It's a serpent venom that you need removed from you by believing on Yahweh Shai, the true brass serpent. St. John chapter 3, verse 19, and it reads, And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. Right, because when you get into the truth of this doctrine, when you get into the truth of the Holy Bible, which also consists of you learning the true name of the Heavenly Father, the only begotten Son, which is Yahweh and Yahweh Shai, you understand that names hold character, and they hold deeds and a reputation. And a brother did a video on it I was watching a while ago. Um, from GMS uh, Chicago. And accountability comes with this. Christianity is evil because it tells you the laws is done away with. That is a stumbling. First off, it's evil to you as an Israelite because that's a stumbling block unto you. That's telling you that, look, you can do whatever the hell you want. That's the same thing as that Alistair Crowley demon, do as thou wilt. That's a lie. And then also, Christians don't want to be reproved because when the truth of the scriptures come out, that means they got to stop eating pork. They got to stop committing adultery. They got to stop calling that fake slave plantation name of JC. They got to call the heavenly father by his proper name by calling on his son's name first. Cause no man coming to the father, but by the son, John chapter 14, verse six. It's a lot of accountability that comes with this. And also that means you got to start um, observing the feast days to the best of your ability. You got to come under order. 
You can't just freestyle what you want. You can't just have private interpretations of the scriptures. And there's even going to be times where the Lord requires you to be abased. Apostle Paul said, I've learned how to abase and how to abound. Roughly paraphrasing, meaning Apostle Paul had to learn how to maneuver when he had money and maneuver without money. Christians can't do that. They, they're not they're not trying to suffer for Yahweh Bosh Melshah's namesake. That's why the main thing you know the Christian church for is, is slurping down pork. Convulsing on the, on the floor of the church, acting like they caught the Holy Spirit when they just possessed by demons. Speaking gibberish and calling and speaking in tongues, which actually speaking in tongues means you're speaking in another language. And even with that, you needed an interpreter. And you also know them for, you know, tossing around a collection plate. And the main thing is having a Bible and letting it collect dust. And like a brother said, when you ask them a precept, when you so like when you bring out a precept, they'll ask you, what book are you reading out of? That's like somebody who that's like talking to somebody about, uh, um, let's say, like a, a physics exam. And you ask him, what's his favorite subject? And he tells you, um, I like um I like uh, the subject of gravity. And then you, you basically tell them, OK, well, when you drop this, when you drop something at this level right here, it's going to hit the ground. He's like, oh, what book did you read that out of? I'm like, dude, the same physics book that you should have been reading out of. That's these Christians, man. That's why when you bring out these precepts, they'll ask you, what book is that? The book of Joel in the Old Testament, which y'all let collect dust. You bring out, oh, how the Lord's only dealing with the Israelites. You can, you can bring out. <laughs> Romans the ninth chapter and they'll ask you what book is that it's Romans the ninth chapter you, you claim you love the New Testament right it's Romans the ninth chapter St. John chapter 3 verse 20 and it reads for everyone that doeth evil hateth the light neither cometh to the light lest his deeds should be reproved let's get that word for reproved real quick Duarte Halabash Yosha this blue letter man moving slow as hell Strong's G, 1651. Eleg ho. Eleg ho. Eleg ho. Outline of biblical usage to convict, refute, confute. Generally with the suggestion of shame of the person convicted. By conviction to bring to light, to expose. To find fault with, correct. By word, to, uh, to reprehend severely. Chide, admonish, reprove. To call to account, show one his fault, demand an explanation by deeds to chasten, to punish. Right. And Christians can't handle shame, man. They can't handle shame. They'll do a lot of backbiting in the church and they'll always talk crap about somebody. They'll do a lot of upbraiding. Which is why when Lord Yahweh Shah speaks in the book of, I believe it's uh, Matthew, the seventh chapter. About judge not lest ye be judged. A Christian will abuse that scripture but it actually cuts them worse than anybody all right i'm talking about jake christians because they will they let me just see if i can get that precept if i got the right one yep matthew chapter 7 verse 1 and it reads judge not that ye be not judged for with what judgment ye judge ye shall be judged and with what measure ye mate it shall be measured to you again so they will take that to mean that means you're not supposed to judge anybody. No, Lord Yahweh Shah is basically telling you if you're gonna <laughs> if you're gonna cast out judgment, don't be a hypocrite. And he's gonna explain it right here, verse three. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye? Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, Let me pull up, let me pull out the mote out of thine eye, and behold, a beam is in thine own eye. Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye, then Shall thou see clearly to cast out of the moat of thy brother's eye? Salakia. Matthew chapter 7, verse 5. Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the moat out of thy brother's eye. So that right there, you know, Lord Yahweh Shai, he says this gets into you not judging somebody with a judgment that you don't want to be judged by. So if a Christian is accusing us of twisting scripture, just like it says in the scriptures, you got to, you know what I'm saying? 
when it comes to any situation, you got to let every matter be established by the witness of two or three witnesses. You got to prove what you're talking about. You can't prove that we're twisting scriptures because you don't know the scriptures as well as you think you do. And you really know and you know Christians don't study like that. There's some that may be diligent, but that's the that's the um the stumbling block of the Christian doctrine. It's a lie. It's like you trying to walk in a, it's like you trying to walk down a trail blindfolded. You may be a good navigator, but if I blindfold you, I'm greatly hindering your senses. And that's what Christianity does to you. That's why it's important to know the true names of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, because those names hold spiritual power. It it wards away demons. Demons fear these names. Satan is under the order. Satan himself is under the orders of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bashmiel Shah. So when you have the correct names, that Christian doctrine, it doesn't it doesn't affect you. But for those that are blinded by it, they're not going to get the understanding of John 3, 16. Things can be right in your face and plain sight and you will never find it because the Lord has to put the spirit on you to even look for it. He has to put the spirit on you to be one of his prophets. He has to put the spirit on you to be a scoffer. He has to put the spirit on you to be diligent. He has to put the spirit on you to be slothful. This is why we fear the Lord. But these precepts reprove those that are going against the truth of the doctrine. All you have to do is go into these root words like our elders and apostles have taught us. But if you do that, you'll be cut. This is how you know this is the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashmi al Shah. Everyone has, has the ability to download the Blue Letter Bible app, but not everybody has this, the Holy Spirit, the Rechak Wadash, to navigate it properly. Or even the wherewithal to just look for certain words. This is why Christianity is also a poison. In our culture, man, Yahweh Bashmi al Shah, he always exhorted us to, to seek wisdom. But Christianity tells you to just be a slothful pork eating chump. Put any, eat, any, eat anything you want to and call it food. Live a lawless life and then come to church on Sunday and everything straight. It's blasphemous. So yeah, they don't want their deeds to be reproved, man. That's why they'll tell you that, that Yahweh Shai came for the world. They'll say JC, but we know our Lord's name is Yahweh Shai. All right. And once again, the power of names and the reputation. The reputation Yahweh Shai has was the savior of the Israelites. The one that's going to sit on the throne of David and beat down the heathen worse than David did. The reputation JC has is making a bunch of uh, a bunch of, you know, moles out of our men. A bunch of weirdos out of our women and just switching gender roles and having everybody be a complete demon of the nation of Israel and just thinking that walking into a church on Sunday makes them better. It made our people that was already bugged out even worse. And Yahweh Bashmi al Shah is going to destroy every single Jake in that Christian church lest he puts the spirit on them to repent. St. John chapter 3, verse 21, and it reads, But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in the most high power of Yahweh. Amen. Right. So those that really seek Yahweh Bashmi al Shah in truth and sincerity, you know, you confess the sins. You confess the sins that you had to Yahweh Bashmi al Shah. You confess the sins you committed to Yahweh Bashmi al Shah, and he's he's ready to forgive through Yahweh Shah, his only begotten son. That's why he sent him. He didn't send Yahweh Shah so you can walk around like a Christian, like, like your shit don't stink. No, he sent Yahweh Shah so you can confess your sins, you can put away your sins, cast them behind you like a menstrual cloth, and you can walk in the righteous way. St. John chapter 22. And it says, uh, yeah, it says, uh, John's last testimony. After these things came Yahweh Shai and his disciples into the land of Judea, and there he tarried with them and baptized. And John also was seen, it's like, and John also was baptizing in Anon near to Salim because there was much water there. And they came and were baptized. This is talking about physical water. Verse 24, for John was not yet cast into prison. Then there arose a question between some of John's disciples and the Jews about purifying. Verse 26, and they came unto John and said unto him, Rabbi, he that was with thee beyond Jordan, to whom thou bearest witness, behold, the same baptizeth and all men come to him. John answered and said, a man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. 
verse 28. Ye yourselves bear me witness that I said, I am not Hamashiach, meaning the anointed, but that I am sent before him. Right, because John the Baptist was sent to pave the way, preaching the baptism of repentance. Okay? Once again, just like with the precepts, it tells you um, about getting built up in the sincere milk when you knew to the truth as opposed to strong meat. So in a sense, John the Baptist was doing that because our people, those that believed, if they believed on John, they, be they would believe on Yahweh which is why John, once they accepted his baptism of repentance, he explained to him, okay, one cometh that is mightier than I, whose shoes of his feet I'm not worthy to loose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Reading on, St. John to the, uh, 3, verse 29, and it reads, He that hateth the bride, it's like it, he that hath, it's like it, slip of the tongue, not the heart. Uh, he that hath the bride is the bridegroom. Okay? So basically, he that hath the bride is the bride, bridegroom, is saying that he that has have the wife is the husband. Yahweh Shai, he's the head of the church. The husband of the church, the church being the woman, spiritually speaking, and Yahweh Shai being the husband, the head. Reading on. But the friend of the bridegroom, which standeth and heareth him, rejoiceth greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. This my joy, therefore, is fulfilled. He must increase, but I must decrease. Right. So John the Baptist is saying right here, look, I'm the bridegroom's friend. I just I'm just look, I'm just you, you know, brothers who've been to weddings know the road of the bridegroom's um. You know, the friend of the bridegroom. All right. You know, basically you being the best man at his wedding. You happy that that, you know, your friend is about to receive his wife, his his chaste virgin. OK. So John the Baptist, spiritually speaking, he played that role by uh, sending forth fruits meet for repentance. Salakia. So well, by having those fruits meet for repentance turned unto Yahweh Shai. They were prepped to understand and listen to Yahweh Shai's doctrine. They were prepped to not be offended in the Lord. Those that are of the elect. St. John chapter 3, verse 31. He that cometh from above is above all. He that is of the earth is earthly and speaketh of the earth. He that cometh from heaven is above all. Right. And this is why there's Jake's that will try to be deep, but they they stumble. They only understand carnal things. They don't understand the spirit. And I'm not saying you got to understand every, you got to be the deepest man, but no, there are important spiritual things you have to understand so you don't get disenchanted in the doctrine, so you don't fall off. So a clown like Vocab Malone can't confound you. You have to understand that what you're, you have to understand what you're a part of so you can properly defend it. And the, the other apostles and the other bitches have been saying this a lot recently. Verse 32. And and what he hath seen and heard, that he testified, and no man received his testimony. Right. And this means amongst the two thirds, no man received his testimony because they don't, they're, they're too earthly. Yahweh Shai is from above. So if you can understand these things, it's because Yahweh Shai, he's opening your mind. He's supping, he knocked on the door, you opened up, and he's supping with you. He's telling you what it is. And where you may fall short, yeah, that's why he set up elder apostles, the elder bishops. The elders on down and the Akim on down that have more experience in this in this knowledge and it's truth. So when you study and you don't get it, you can inquire of your elders. St. John chapter 3, verse 33. He that hath received his testimony hath set to his seal that the most high power Yahweh is true. Right? Because if you receive Yahweh Shah's testimony, you know, you're acknowledging that the Heavenly Father Yahweh is real. That's why our Lord, he that's why it's beautiful to believe on Yahweh Shah because. Yahweh Shai fills in the dots. We're not holy enough to be in the presence of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, or to even be dealing with Yahweh directly. We go through Yahweh Shai, and he covers it. He fills up the gaps. All right. And Yahweh Shai also testifies on our behalf to the Father, so the Father can deal with us accordingly. Verse 34. He, Salakia, St. John chapter 3, verse 34. For he whom the Most High Power, Yahweh, hath sent, speaketh the words of the Most High Power, Yahweh. For the Most High Power, Yahweh, giveth not the Spirit by measure unto him. The Father loveth the Son, and hath given all things into his hand. And that's another precept that goes into um, St. John, the fifth chapter, where it gets into the Father judges no man, but has given all judgment unto the Son. All right. 
And right here where it says for, in verse 34, for he whom the most high power Yahweh hath sent speaketh the words of the most high power Yahweh. For the most high power Yahweh giveth not the spirit by measure unto him. Okay. So this once again this gets into uh the spirit of the prophets, you know. So like you're not that precept. This gets into how true prophets are speaking the words directly from the Heavenly Father Yahweh. Okay? And this is why the testimony of Yahweh Shah is the spirit of prophecy. So if Yahweh Shah, if Yahweh Bashmiel Shah is dealing with you, you're you are gonna speak the correct words of prophecy. You're gonna probably break down these precepts and these scriptures. You're gonna understand the doctrine, you're gonna study it not be offended in it and wherever you may you know lack understanding you'll pray to the lord for more understanding and he'll give it unto you and then you know there's times you can even ask brothers that can be your prayers being answered or a brother may put up a video that's why you know through the spirit of the apostle to har you know yahweh bosh me puts it on the spirit to tell us to be diligent because we never know you know the elect is always watching you never know when they're going to come across that video and that the day that you put out a video where you may be tired and you have to push through your tiredness or your exhaustion, that may be the day that somebody of the elect watches your video and they get pulled out of that Christian bullcrap or they get pulled out of Islam or Judaism or um, the African worship bullcrap or the Egyptology or the Buddhism, you name it. Any of these false ways, man. St. John chapter 3, verse... 34 for he whom the most high power Yahweh hath sent speaketh the words of the most high power Yahweh for the most high power Yahweh giveth not the spirit by measure unto him now let me get this word measure to make sure that it's what I um what I'm thinking that it is Strong's G 3358 Metron Metron Metron, outline of biblical uses, measure an instrument for measuring, a vessel for receiving and determining the quantity of things, whether dry or liquid, a graduated staff for measuring, a rod, it's like a measuring rod, proverbial, it's like you, proverbially, proverbially, it's like you, proverbially, the rule or standard of judgment, determine extent, portion, measured off, measure or limit. The required measure, the do fit measure. Right. So that precept is beautiful because it's saying that who the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, gives the spirit of uh, of understanding to. He's giving it to him without measure, without limit. Yahweh Shah received that spirit without limit. That's why he was able to confound doctors in the law when he was 12. That's why he was able to um, confound the, the, the uh, quote unquote, the lawyers of Israel. All right. The Pharisees, the Sadducees, the Essenes, you name it. He was able to confound all of them, the wicked scribes. Okay, because Yahweh Bashmi al Shai, it's like the Heavenly Father Yahweh sent his only begotten son to uh, set things straight, to clarify the law. And also, Yahweh Shai is the word made flesh. So, those that come in his spirit, those that he's dealing with, all right, every brother has a certain measure of the spirit, but it gets back into how um, you're not limited. Yes, we know in part and we prophesy in part, but that doesn't mean you don't know what you need to know unto salvation to teach his people. It just means that certain things that Yahweh Bashmi al Shai hasn't deemed necessary for salvation on this side, he's putting that aside and saving that for later. We'll receive that in the kingdom, like the whereabouts of the tribe of Dan, um, you know, where the Ark of the Covenant is, you know, things like that. Like it sounds, um, it's, it's not wicked, but it's just not important to salvation. Because if it was, the Lord would have gave it to us. All right. St. John chapter 3, verse 36, and it reads, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life. But the wrath of the Most High Power, Yahweh, abideth on him. And what, how is that going to play out? For the two-thirds Jakes that don't believe in Yahweh Shai, you know, or that claim they believe in him with lip service, but they walk a completely contrary way behind closed doors or even out in the open, they're going to eat a missile. They're going to be part of that lake that burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Okay, the first death was the, uh, what they call the deluge, which was the uh, the great flood, which Noah and his um and his three sons and his wife and their wives survived. Those eight souls that Yahweh Bashmi al Shai had mercy on. Now, in this time, only the elect of the nation of Israel, out of the out of the nation of Israel, is going to survive. 
Many heathen will be destroyed, including the Edomites, but they will be left over so they can go head first into captivity. But all the wicked Israelites, they're going to be put to delete. They're going to be put to deletion and come back through the loins of the elect. So they're going to see the second death, which is by fire. The ICBM nuclear missile destruction hitting America. Those that take the MOTB, which is the micro potato chip going in your right hand or your forehead. Those Israelites also are going to take part in the lake of fire. The Lord's going to make sure that everybody he slated for that lake of fire that's not written in the Lamb's Book of Life is going to be in it. This is why it's important to have the correct doctrine, believe on it and walk in it and fight the good fight of faith. No matter what you're told, let no man take your crown. And once again, the wrath of the Most High Power abideth on him, meaning that, well, like I said, the Lord has to put the spirit on you to be wicked. He has to put the spirit on you to teach the correct doctrine. He has to put the spirit on you to believe a false doctrine. If he put the spirit on you to believe the correct doctrine and even teach it and you endure unto the end, he put the spirit on you to endure to the end. His love is abiding on you. He's dealing with you as a, as a son. But if he puts the spirit on you to abide not in the doctrine, to not believe on his son, teach a false doctrine or teach 99 percent of the doctrine, which, you know, the Lord's not dealing with partial. He's dealing with the full thing. Then, yes, his wrath abideth on you. That means he hates you. He's going to make sure that you suffer. Now, all Israel will be saved. But that right there is going to be a telltale sign of, look. He loves you, but not more than he loves these Israelites over here. The Israelites he loved the most is the elect. And this is why we keep saying, Ottawa and Ratazar, we be of that very number because we understand the importance of the elect. The elect are the only Israelites the Heavenly Father, the Yahweh Bashmiel Shah, is dealing with consistently on this side. But that's all I have for this epistle. Hopefully, this lesson was edifying and exhorting to the elect of the nation of Israel, to the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel. Once again, I'm going to give all praises, honor, and glory to our beloved Heavenly Father, His only begotten Son, our beloved Lord and Savior. Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rechak, Wadash. Double honors, as always, to our elder apostles and our elder bishops of Great Millstone, who rule well, who teach well, who we learn the truth from daily, whether you're here for bearing the sincere citations, as always, to the sincere archim of Great Millstone, on down that teach the likewise doctrine and truth and sincerity helping to edify the flock of the nation of Israel and to the sincere listeners as well. That consists of the speckled bird, Hebrews, like foreigners scattered among the heathen that look like the heathen. Kwam Yasharala and a Baba Ball. We're almost out of here. Adawan Ratazah. And we got next. Adawan Ratazah. Shema Yasha Allah, Yahawa, Allahai Nawa, Yahawa, Achad. Wa, Yahawa, Bahasham, Yahawa Shai, Shalach Rayam, Wa, Ainashim, Wa, Haragim. Wa Ashim, Wa Abadim, Wa Mashapatim, all called Adawamim, Wa Ayabim Nawa, Wa Gawayim, Wa Babal, Wa Babal, Wa Babal. I tha, I tha, I tha, Baba Kusha, Baba Kusha, Baba Kusha, Thawada, Thamyad, Tawab, Aman. Shabbat Shalawam.